So this is the homework video for section 9.2. You were assigned problems 12 through 14, 24 through 26, 30 through 32, all evens. So I'm going to do three of those problems. So I'm going to do problems number 14, 26, and 32. I'll start with number 14. So for number 14, they ask us to use the table method. So they don't want to use they don't want us to use the foil method. They specifically want us to use the table method. So I'm going to create a table real quick. And then I'm going to populate my table. I'm going to write the first polynomial on the left side and then the second polynomial on the top. So the highest degree monomial goes first, 4b. Then the lower degree monomial, the negative 3. Here the b goes first, it's higher degree. And then the negative 7 goes afterwards. And then I just do my multiplication, 4b times b, which is 4b squared. Then 4b times negative 7, that's negative 28b. Then negative 3 times b, which is negative 3b. And then negative 3 times a negative 7, which is a positive 21. And then I go ahead and find any similar degree monomials and I highlight them. So for my second degree, I have no counterparts, it's all alone. But for my first degree monomials, I do have a pair of them. This and this. And then my third degree, sorry, my zero degree. Uh, I don't have a third degree monomial here. My zero degree is all alone, just like the second degree. So then I combine anything that's of the same degree. So it would be my first degree monomial, so negative 3b and the negative 28b. These two, I'll just write them out as they were, because there's nothing else I can do there. So the 4b squared just gets written out. Then here I can combine my first degrees. Negative 3b and negative 28b is going to give us negative 31b. And the 21 just gets written in because there's nothing else I can do there. So that's the answer to that problem. So for the table method, set up your table. Populate your table. First polynomial goes here, highest degree monomial first, lower degree monomial second. Second polynomial goes on the top, again, highest degree monomial first, lower degree monomial second. Cross multiply. And then combine any similar degree monomials. And that's your answer. And write them out uh, starting with the top left and then ending with the bottom right so go in that direction and that'll kind of guarantee you standard form so next up I'm going to do uh, number 26 I'm actually gonna do 32 first I'm gonna go a little bit out of order I'll save 26 for last and I have a reason for that 32 we're asked to use the foil method only for uh, finding this particular problem so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use the foil method so the FOIL method means first, then outer, then inner, and then last I'm going to write my last in a yellow highlighter so I'm not sure if you'll be able to read that but here goes last. Uh, and that just tells me the order of the monomials I should multiply. So I should be multiplying my first monomials first. So these two guys get multiplied first, the 4m and the 2m, which gives me 8m squared. Then I should be looking at my outer monomials which are these two gentlemen right here, the 4m and the 7, which gives me a positive 28m. Then I should be multiplying my inners, the positive 9 and the 2m, which gives me a positive 18m. And then last but not least, I should be multiplying my lasts, which is the 9 to the 7, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this, uh, but 
should be 63, so positive 63, so I'm not sure if you can see this. Right, a little bigger. So that's a positive 63. Um, and what? Let me write over it with the black marker. So 63, and I'll just I don't know, circle it or something, or underline it with the yellow. Uh, then the only thing that you need to do is combine your like terms, simplify it. Here we have a first degree monomial, first degree monomial. Those are the only two that are like that. So I'm going to go ahead and and that so much looks like an 18 and that's not an 18, that's a 28. It's a terrible two that I just made here. And that's even more terrible, but that's a 28. Yeah, so the final answer should be 8m squared. Then we have 28m plus an 18m is 46m and last but not least we have that positive 63 so done that's the answer to number 32 using the FOIL method to multiply per binomials so now I'm gonna back pedal and do number 26 next I can this is a binomial times a trinomial, and I can use the box method or a modified box method or the table method, uh, whatever you like to call it, to do this problem. It's probably the best way to do this problem. But I'm going to show you a, another way of doing this problem uh, in case that's more comfortable for you. So I'll do number 26 both ways. That's why I wanted the full page for it. Um, so this method is a distribution method. It's similar to the FOIL method, but because it's no longer two binomials, the FOIL terminology doesn't quite apply here. So what happens is you are going to take the first monomial of the first polynomial and multiply it against every single monomial in the second polynomial, just like this. So essentially you're distributing the first monomial to every single other monomial in the second polynomial. And you do the same thing to the second monomial, the first polynomial. You'll distribute that into the second polynomial. This is sometimes referred to the clamshell method, and you can probably see why it's referred to as the clamshell method. Uh, but this just tells you multiply in the direction of the arrows, and then afterwards combine anything that needs to be combined. So 5x times a negative 3x squared, that's negative 15x to the third. And then you get 5x times positive 4x, that's a positive 20x. Then 5x times a negative 1, that's a negative 5x. And then you get 2 times negative 3x squared, which is a negative 6x squared. And then you get 2 times positive 4, which is a positive 8x. And then 2 times negative 1, which is a negative 2. So the first three were this monomial being distributed into the second polynomial. The second three were this monomial being distributed to the second polynomial. So 5x times negative 3x squared, 5x times 4x, 5x times negative 1, 2 times negative 3x, 2 times 4x, 2 times negative 1. And now that's all said and done, the only thing that's left is to combine anything of the same degree. Third degree is not going to have a counterpart, and it seems like neither is the zero degree, but the first and the second degrees possibly have counterparts. Uh, let's see here. Yes, if I didn't make a small mistake, 5x times 4x should have been 20x squared. So here... And here I can combine, and then again here, and here I can combine. And when I do that, I get negative 15x to the third, then I get positive 14x squared, then I get positive 3x, and then I get a, just a negative 2. 
So that's one way of solving that particular problem. Now I'm going to do this problem in a different way. I'm going to use the, uh, the table method. Problem, except this time I want to do it via the table method. So I have a binomial times a trinomial. So I need a 2 by 3 table. So here I have a 2 by a 3 table. And the way I distribute or set up this table is the first polynomial goes on the left here with the highest degree monomial first. 5x is higher than 2, so it goes first. Then the 2 goes underneath it. And then my second monomial goes on top. Again, with the highest degree, sorry, my second polynomial goes on the top with my highest degree monomial going first. That's a second degree monomial. It's the highest one. So it goes first. Then the 4x, because it's next, it's first degree. And the negative one is zero degree, goes last. And then I'm simply going to um, cross multiply this with this, this with this to get this, this with this to get this. Then this with this to get this, this with this to get this, and then this with this to get this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 5x times negative 3x squared, that's negative 15x squared. 5x times 4x, that's positive 20x. 5x times negative 1, that's negative 5x. 2 times negative 3x, that's negative 6x squared. 2 times 4x, that's positive 8x. 2 times negative 1, that's negative 2. Then I'm going to find and circle anything that's in common. And that should have been a 5x to the third power. Yay me. So first of all, I'm going to look for my highest degree monomial. That's my third degree monomial. I'm just going to circle it just to isolate it. Then I'll look for my second degree monomials. I have one here. I should have another one. I'm making mistakes. 5x times 4x should have been positive 20x squared. So I have second degree, second degree. I'm going to circle them both with the same color, blue. And then I'm going to look for my first degree monomials. Negative 5x, 8x, both are first degree monomials. Circle them with the green. And then my zero degree monomial is all alone, just like my third degree monomials. So these two are going to be all alone. I'm going to circle it with my yellow highlighter that you can barely see. And then I'm going to combine anything that's of the same color or the same degree. Anything that doesn't have a counterpart, I'm just going to write it down all by itself. So that's negative 15x to the third. That's my third degree that didn't have a counterpart. Then my second degrees, they have a counterpart. I'm going to combine them, 20x squared and negative 6x. That is positive 14x squared, 8x, negative 5x. That is going to give me a positive 3x, and the negative 2 just gets written in. So that's the answer, and that's the same answer because there are just two different methods of solving the same problem. So I don't really care on the quiz or the test which method you use, if you want to use the distribution method or the clamshell method, also known sometimes as the vertical and horizontal method. Um, or if you want to use the table method, does that doesn't make a difference to me. Whatever makes sense to you, whatever is easier for you. So if that's easier, use that. If that's easier, use that. Um, yep. So if you have any questions, we'll talk about it in class. Thank you.